Hello friends, good to be with you again. <clears throat> it's always a pleasure to be able to come your way and share some precious words out of the book, the Bible. Today is going to be another wonderful day and uh, I feel privileged to be able to share these words with you. And now, this is not a religious activity or exercise. This is um, meant to share life with you. And let's see how much we can believe God together. Um, can I ask that we join our faith together even as we pray and trust God to speak to our heart minister his words to us and cause there to be revelation so that his word will have access and will accomplish that which it is sent to accomplish our father in the name of Jesus we come to you this moment and ask that you will speak your word to us Lord the entrance of your word gives light brings understanding to the simple father we draw back guards whatever dogmas we have upheld to defend our position Whatever we have believed, whatever misinformation we were given, by the reason of the anointing, we ask that the yoke will be broken. Lord, let it not be me that is speaking to your people. Use my lips. Lord, use my faculties and speak to your people. Let even the processing of this information be backed up by your own spirit. Father God, that these words will be able to enter into the hearts. Lord, that it will fall on good ground. That this will be hearts, Lord, that will be able to make use of these words and prosper with it. For your word says, that you wish above all things that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Let this word brings, pro, bring prosperity to our souls. Not only those who are listening to it now, but those who will listen to it later. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Thank you for helping us do much more than we can think of or imagine. Because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's wonderful. I want to thank all of you that are joining me. I want to believe that um, God is going to use this to say something to your heart, minister to you powerfully, and cause you to have revelation knowledge. We had a tutor some years ago in our secondary school who taught us Bible knowledge who did not who did not believe in the Bible and I know that there are people who have a fair knowledge in fact they are very well versed they quote the Bible passage without making any mistake but they don't believe in the Bible so that's not a strange thing there are those who are searching so they read various kinds of religious books and so the bible is also another religious material you know one thing i found out for people who use the bible as a historical resource material that's in many cases that's to the extent it will help them but you see if you actually want to know the will of God, one thing is true. 
you can only find that will if you have made up your mind already that when he tells you his will, you will do it. Uh, you wonder how does it work that way? That's the way it is. Because, come to think of it, the last thing God told you to do, most people don't do the last thing God has spoken to them. God has said a lot of things that we should do at personal level. Sometimes it's something he has asked you to do with somebody else, but it doesn't bother you. You just wanted to hear for the fun of it. The Bible says, if you are willing to do it, then it's easy for you to know. All right. So while some people are arguing, some are quarreling, some are fighting, some are killing for God and seeking to impress him, the word of God is something that we need to take very seriously because God has spoken his mind and it's stored up in that book. And uh, the difference is when you open up to the Spirit of God. You see, it's difficult to be able to help someone who is already made up. Have you ever bothered to find out or to ask, how come God is all-powerful? How come He is all-knowing? He is omnipresent. As much as God is omnipresent, he does not manifest his power everywhere. And, and that is something we need to understand. God does not manifest his power everywhere. I give you um, an analogy. For instance, suppose I pick this and fit them into my ears and then Plug it into my system. You might be right here with me. Or you might be, you know, talking to me. But I'm not hearing what you're saying. Or I might hear what you're saying, but I don't understand. I don't have the flow. I could hear it in bits because what is taking my attention, what is what has gotten my focus is speaking right directly into my ears. And that is likely going to be the main thing I am listening to. I might be looking at you, but not hearing what you are saying. That's the way it is. That's why I say, if you all, if you discover that more than not, you, you usually will hear devil tell you stories. One primary reason is that you pay attention, you listen to him. And let nobody deceive you to tell you devil is a myth. It's not true. It's not true. Devil is real, but God is more real. All right. So um, I feel that we should take a look at this Bible passage because so many things will come in addition to that to help us in our journey. See, it doesn't matter how long you live here on planet Earth. You will not live long enough. Long enough compared to eternity. And I personally believe that eternity is something that should interest every human being. Because sooner or later, we all will live there. Yeah, in the future, all of us will live in eternity. Bible says in the book of Revelation, it says, And they shall be time no more so there is a moment when time ends for a human being now life does not cease life continues at another level in another dimension but it does not cease that thing you learned in physics if you did is true there is nothing like cessation of life. Life does not cease. But this body can go so far. So many people have 
accepted that the highest they can live is 72. And when that forms a belief in your heart, it does not matter the medical care you receive, medical attention. When that time comes, because your subconscious has recorded it and kept, you see, something, something will happen somewhere that will help you to fulfill your belief. <laughs> so if I were you, I will extend it. I used to tell my children, I said, I don't know, I don't want to live up to a hundred. I've changed my mind. I, I've changed my mind. <laughs> I, I, told, I told one of my daughters, I said, I've changed my mind. I've reconsidered it because I've seen provision in the word of God. 72 and at most 75, 80, is, it was as a result of the sin of humanity. You are entitled to a hundred and above. I used to ask myself, what exactly will I be staying here and do? Now I know that I have a lot I can do or I will do because Paul said to go is for my benefit, but to stay alive is for your benefit. So there are people that my being alive will help. The wealth of wisdom that God has stored up inside of me, I will have to pass on to the people who will need them. And my presence here will do a lot for so many people. So I've made a choice. So how are you so sure? Well, leave that one. As we study on, you will discover that you have a right to choose. You have a right to choose whether you want to live and your life is meaningful and impactful or you just want to exist and then at the end you just escape. That, that shouldn't be your portion. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the book of James. And if you have your Bible with you, that would be very helpful. And I would encourage you to take a look at the Bible passages and as much as possible, jot them down. The good thing about this stuff is you can always play it again. You can look at it again, you know, so... Um, it helps you with your study. Um, don't just take the things that I have said, but you personally make the finding. Confirm, are these things true? I mean, true. Am I just speaking what I like? Or am I just trying to share what I personally believe? Or are these things written in the Bible? Does the Bible really say this? All right. And I, I, I like what um, Dr. Mike Murdoch said. If the Bible was written by human being, most of the things that are written, they wouldn't have been written. But I, I will believe what the Bible says. It says it was written by the inspiration of the Almighty God. Now, inspiration, I like the way my pastor used to teach us. It's like you holding a child's hand and as you write letter A, it's not that child. You are influencing the lettering. You are influencing the writing. So as you hold a child's hand and pull the A and write, that is how the inspiration is. So while the person inhabits this body, but the actual influence that is causing the person to do the writing. Okay, maybe that is sounding too far away from us. Most of the things I'm going to say are not pre-planned. Yes, I have studied. Yes, I've prayed. Yes, I've meditated. But most of the things that I'm going to say or that I say whenever I minister are not. In fact, sometimes I will write a whole lot of notes. And I'm not able to even open the book. I call that inspiration. And people would tell you, do you know that thing you said? We were laughing because you were addressing something. In fact, that's, that's what happened in the last ministration I had for the couples. You know, when we had the, the couples program. And a couple came and said, Sally, it was so funny. And... You were just talking about what we do. 
what you just said has corrected something. I mean, that's my paraphrase. And other people said, I've never seen it like that before. And many of the things, I've never said them like that before. In fact, I never really thought about them. As you are speaking, there is a release. There is a flow. When you go off what God wants you to say, you discover that you will have that check on the inside of you. So, let us read the book of James chapter 2. And let's take a look at what the Bible says. And... Um, See how much life we can draw from there. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, I can see wonderful people here. Um, please stay with me. Because um, I believe that God will use this to add to the value that you carry already. Now, verse 17 of Hebrews chapter 2. Sorry, James chapter 2. James chapter 2, from verse 17. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. In other words, faith that has no corresponding work is like a dead body. That is what the original translation would like us to know. It's like a dead body. In fact, some faith are so dead that they have started thinking. What does that mean? They are people who believe that there is God. They believe what God has said to them. Or maybe a prophecy was spoken and they said that actually agrees with what I have been having in mind. But they would not do a thing. Good evening to you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So, um, when you claim to believe what God has said you should do, but you don't take action to back up your belief, you have not really believed. Now, there are different kinds of belief. There are different kinds of belief. There is the belief that the devil has. Bible says that the devil even believes there is God but he trembles. In other words, he's scared. I wish we had the, the understanding, the real understanding to see how much the devil trembles. And he does not tremble before everybody. He trembles before the person who knows his or her value or his worth in Christ Jesus. Now, there are many people who are born again quote and unquote, but they do not know who they are in Christ Jesus. Some people, even though they know who they are, judge their value based on their experiences. And somebody will say, no, I won't even say that. I know God wants it said. I know it's in the Bible, but I won't preach it because I've not experienced it yet. God didn't say you should preach your experience. He said to preach the word of God. I have a right to pre preach and teach the word of God. Teach the truth. In fact, I have taught myself into that truth. There are things that I, as, as I'm teaching them in obedience to God, I'm not actually teaching to the people. I'm hearing something I didn't premeditate and God is speaking to me. And what I do is I go back and listen. Do you know most of the things I preach? I go back and listen to them because... I did not pre-plan to say those things. So if that's the inspiration of God, if that was a rema, a specific word to address a specific situation, and I need help in that area, I will do well to pay attention and do it. Because I do not want to be a signpost. You know, signposts can be there for 30 years, depending on the, the strength of the material that is used to make it can be there directing people to the venue, but never will leave that place to go. So I don't want to be just a voice that is speaking to people, directing people to where it's happening, how it's happening, and they go there and get all the blessings, and I'm just here announcing. I want to be a big player. 
I want to experience the things that God has put in my heart to share with my world. So Bible says in this place, it says um, from verse 17, even so, if it had not works, is dead. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. So the Greek word there is, it says it's like a dead body. Verse 18. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. And uh, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. You know, there's so many times people argue about things that don't even make any meaning. Some say, oh, we believe in Trinity. Some say we believe in one God. And you see believers fight over that. It doesn't mean anything. Some say we believe we will all fly away. There will be a rapture. Some say we will live here. We know in part. We know in part. And even if you know everything, you need to humble yourself. Because the more you know, the more there is to know. So why would that cause us to fight as brothers and sisters? Why, why should we fight? In fact, if you are right and I'm wrong, what difference does it make to you? Some people believe in healing, but they don't receive it. Some believe, I mean, they are so well versed with the Bible passages. They believe in prosperity, but they are not prospering. Some believe in what the Bible says about good family life, but they are not having it. So why are we arguing? If you are not experiencing it, what's the quarrel about? We do not need to quarrel. We do not need to fight over this matter. We need to be ready. We need to be doers. We get to see it. So verse 19 says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou, done, thou hast done well. The devil also believes and trembles. See, that's the Bible passage that we're talking about. So even the devil is a believer. But his kind of belief is that he trembles. Why? He's afraid. Lives in perpetual fear. If you know how much fear, being a person of understanding, for being matured in the things of the Spirit, being able to understand the mind of the Father for you, if you know how much that put fear into the devil, you wouldn't be afraid anymore. You will not be afraid anymore. So God wants us to not just know on the surface, but we should understand, have in-depth knowledge. Know beyond the surface. There are people who know me, but they don't understand me. You understand what I'm saying? But if my wife tells you she understands me, you better believe her. I mean, 26 years is long enough <laughs> for her to tell you she knows she understands me. All right? Verse 20. But will thou know, O then man, mm, sorry, that faith without works is dead? I said some people's faith is so dead that it stinks from a distance. You can smell the, the stench. What are we talking about? They've always said, I, I know God wants me to do it. I believe God wants me to do that. And I ask them, when will you do it? No plans. I know that God wants to save me. So when will you surrender your life to the Lord? They, have not, they don't have a time. They just wish, if God really wants me, then one day he will just force me. He will just knock my head off. Or in fact, take off my brain. So I don't know anything and then I surrender my life to Jesus. Then you are not serious. You're not serious because every other thing that you have genuinely wanted to do, you make an effort. You will not be able to follow God. You won't be able to serve him if you do not commit to it. If you do not make up your mind that anything I see in God's word and the light I receive per time, I have made up my mind to follow God. I have made up my mind to live for him. 
even if it is something I've always been living with and because of the level of understanding or what I was taught then and how much I understood then, but now I have fresh insight and it's not against the will of God. It's not against his purpose. It's not against his word. I am ready to change. If that's our position, God will always be speaking to us. He will always be revealing himself to us. He will always be speaking because he knows you will do it. It doesn't make sense to keep saying, Lord, speak to me, speak to me. You know, like I said the other time, some people will sing it and they will be shaking their voice. Oh, Lord, send me. And by the time the Lord is sending them, there's trouble. By the time the Lord has now spoken and said, okay, son, I want you to do this. <laughs> Lord, use me. Okay. Now, God says, okay, um, I'm ready to use you. Now, get ready. All I want to do is just get out of your house, go to your next door neighbor and have a brief conversation. Just speak with your neighbor for five minutes. Yeah, eh? <laughs> and we've never been greeting. Now that's why he's saying you should go there so that you start greeting. You know, some people don't greet you until they want to give you invitation to come for their program. I'm telling you the things that many believers do. They don't say hello to you. It happens even here on Facebook. Some people will never, will never as much as say hello. You say something or you write a comment or you write something that is ministering to them. No like nothing. They don't say anything. They, they are just there. And they have been your friends for more than two years. They have not said anything. They have no, they are so insensitive. They are passive. Things you just run on their own. That is not how life is supposed to be. Bible says it's not good for the man to be alone. It is not good for the man to be alone. That word alone is not good for the man to be separate or to be on his own. All right. So if you distance yourself from people and wait until maybe you have an occasion, you now just want to impose your thing on them. I can predict they might receive, but it won't be as, is, as powerful or as effective as if you have been in, interested in them. It doesn't cost you, you, you don't pay to say hello. Let's not digress. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Now, Walk is not what qualified him, but was justified. The word justified there is that he, it, it was, his faith was established by what he did. The corresponding action he took, that is what confirmed his faith, what established his faith. So that's what the justification there is talking about. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had Offered, so he took action. Isaac, his son, upon the altar, if he did not genuinely believe, he would have held on to that. And God wouldn't have been able to do or say what he said after that. So if you believe, you will act in obedience. See, there is no faith without obedience. What really shows that you believe is what you do as a result of your belief. The action you take, your belief is expressed in your behavior. The psychologist would even say that. So you can't say that you believe God and consistently you have been doing things against his will and his leading. You consistently been doing things that are in against the word of God. So how do you believe then? What's the difference with the devil that believes and he trembles? Because eventually when God will ask you to do what is actually supposed to cause all the reward of your labor of many years to come to pass, you won't do it. And you don't even know what is content. Many times opportunities, they come in form of assignment. That's why I tell my children, you, you cannot 
want to be a member of the family and you are not excited about being part of what is going on. You have to participate and you will get matured. You get to discover things. You get to learn. As you get involved, do it according to the instruction, according to the guidelines. You discover that you are discovering things. You are having some aha moments. You know, things are clicking. Oh, you can connect the dots. Oh, okay. So this is what, okay, I'm understanding it now. How many of you remember the Karate Kid? You know, wax on, wax off. And he wanted, the, he just wanted to learn karate at, at once. But the teacher says, you need to start, wash the car, <laughs> wash the windscreen. As he is doing that, he's training his hand without knowing. The teacher does not owe you any explanation to tell you, this is what I'm teaching you. And I, I see that what, one of the reasons why many parents cannot stand up to tell the child, you have to do this, is that one, they are afraid of making them upset. Listen, we owe our children a duty. And one of the things we owe them is to, tell, to guide them, to help them. So they don't make stupid decisions in their lives. They don't do something foolish. They don't hurt themselves. They don't have to repeat the mistakes others have already made. And maybe even repeat your own mistakes. And love has to be tough. You don't have to be hurting, but you have to be tough. If you want to be a genuine lover, you have to be tough. There are times you have to put your feet down. You're not screaming, no hitting of anybody. This is what we are going to do. And that's it. That's it. If you feed the child, if you provide accommodation for the child, if you care for the child, if you have been signing you know, documents for the child, and then when it comes to character building, development, you are afraid. You are afraid to tell the child, no, you don't do it that way. And they may try to murmur. Teach them, you don't murmur in this house. No murmuring. No murmuring. You don't need to understand. Just that respect has to be taught. All right? So this aspect of um, people doing just what they want to do, we have to come to the point we understand. The proof that you believe is that you obey. There is nothing like I trust God and you don't obey him. I like that song. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It's a powerful song. All right. So Abraham had to apply corresponding action. But listen, when he offered Isaac, I like the fact that this place is not saying he pretended to be offering Isaac. He actually offered Isaac. If you read that account in the Old Testament, you discover that it, God had to send an angel to stop Abraham. Abraham wholeheartedly had offered. He could see that boy sacrificed by himself, but he also trusted that God will bring him back to life. He trusted that there's nothing that will stop him from coming back to life. And so in his heart, he has sacrificed. See, God is a heart God. He knows when we are just pretending. He knows when you are just acting. He knows that when we are just into lip service, you are saying what you are not committed to. You know, and we carry that into various areas of our lives. Somebody said, as you do a thing is how you do everything. Well, there, there may be some limitations to that, but there's, there's some truth in that. Because it's the same spirit that you are carrying. I know there are some times we get involved in things that we are not genuinely interested in. But it shouldn't be with the word of God. It should not be with the word. It shouldn't be with your destiny. It shouldn't be with what God has asked you to do. So in this verse, it says that... Um, Abraham offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Yeah, he actually lifted the, the knife and was going to sacrifice it. 
So God sent that angel and said, Abraham, stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no. I've already made provision. I have already made provision for in the mouth of the Lord, there is provision. Sometimes what God asks you to do may not be that so easy. And God will not allow you to fall off the cliff. He may ask you to do the work. And sometimes it looks like all the account you have is running out. In fact, you have to, it looks like you are going to take over draft and, and you are going to get into indebtedness. If you are obeying God, you will not have one, one second of headache. If you are obeying God, you are going to see what the Bible says. And I believe it. If you believe what the word says, then it's easy to walk by faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we're just reading here and it's saying, for you to live a life of faith, you have to have a corresponding action to that faith that you claim to have. So if God has said you are going to build a structure that would accommodate 10,000 people, then he has given you, he has made provision for it already. You, you only need to find out how do I go about it and then just follow through, follow up. I learned one thing from my mom. My mom used to tell me, you know, I had this habit in those days as a child. I will sweep, you know, after you sweep the, uh, um, sweep the space in between the houses, we, we, have, we had a compound that was big. And uh, you had to sweep the whole space before you can go and get bath to go to school. Sometimes I'll just sweep it and, and leave it there and go to school. And sometimes I'll leave it there. The whole next day we'll come and meet it and then sweep again and still pack them there. My mom used to sell, tell me, when you do a good thing, complete it. Do you know I've carried that saying? That saying sings in my ear. It it affects me in if i start writing a book i want to complete it why i'm still hearing my mom telling me when you start a good thing complete it and i'll pass it on to you so i'm saying what my mom used to say and it's helping me today when you start a good thing complete it the only thing you should start and not continue is something you know is going to destroy your destiny something that is holding you down is helping is causing you to operate below your capacity give it up there are things you win by giving up. He said, winners don't quit. There are things you win by quitting. There are relationships that you need to let go so that you can fulfill your purpose, fulfill your destiny. There are things that you need to give up. If you know you are doing things that are hurting you, hurting your destiny, and don't allow you, or you are in a relationship that's always, every time you, you have anything to do, with this particular person, you have to spend maybe a week at least or a month to recover from the negative impact of that relationship. You need to do something about it. You need to let it go so you can be free to serve God. All right. So um, verse um, 22 says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his work? Have you seen how effective Faith turns out when it has work, all right? When he had offered his son, no, sorry, I, I've jumped into, and by works was faith made perfect. Faith matures when you apply corresponding action. When you work out your faith, when you work it out, so everything may not just come together. Now, of course, when it is done and when you have already seen what you were promised, you don't need to believe anymore because you already have it. If God promised me this and I trust him and I have it already, do I need to believe again to see it? No. So for people who say um, seeing is believing, no, not in the life of faith. In the life of faith, you believe first. In the life of faith, you believe first. If God is calling you and you're already above 60 and he's giving you an assignment and you are sure this assignment is what God wants me to do. And people are telling you, oh, oh you should have started that project when you were 20. Just trust God 
and follow him, he has life. He has the key. He, he has the ability to keep you safe and sound. He has all the power. He knows how to keep you alive to fulfill that purpose. That assignment he has given to you. Everything God has put. Did you hear Bible says? Everything that he has put in your heart. He says he has put eternity in their heart. The assignment God has given to you. The purpose that he has programmed into you. It will not go until you fulfill it. So if yours has to be in another country. Better start going. But make sure you prepare yourself. Don't just go at random. So you don't make a mess of yourself. The most powerful sign that you believe God is that you prepare. If I wish I can say that well enough. If you truly believe that God wants to use you to do a particular thing, the most powerful thing to do and show it to yourself that I believe this is you get yourself prepared. It's not doing it. You don't do it first. No, you know the will of God. That is major. Then prepare. God wants to use you for an international ministry. You need to be trained. You need to allow yourself to be trained. So you, you are prepared. The most powerful thing a brain surgeon does is not the practice. It's the preparation. Yeah. So... This should not be the thing that you want to do and leave a mark, be outstanding, and you just want to do it casually. The fact that you dream and the dream comes to pass doesn't mean you have now become a dream interpreter. You need to prepare yourself. Allow yourself to be trained. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. The things that God wants to use you to do the most powerful sign or evidence that you have faith is that you allow yourself to be trained and make it easy for those who have the chance to train you to be happy to train you, to be happy to do what they are supposed to do for you. Suppose Elisha did not follow. Even when the master was trying to discourage, he followed because there's something. He knew there was something he had to get from him. The man did everything to, I mean, no, leave him behind. The, the young man also made up his mind. He said, this, this thing, I'll get it. And when it was time to make his request, because he served wholeheartedly. Many people today want the anointing that is free or the anointing that they just lay hand on you. There's room for that. But there is something that you can never get just, just having wanting the hand to be laid on you. There's something you can't. You need to follow that grace. Follow that anointing. Be very careful to observe the things that is, and be open to learn to avoid the mistakes of that anointing or the person that is anointed. But yield yourself to that anointing. Learn how does he yield himself to this anointing. I think this message is just getting multifaceted. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. It was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now, talking about Abraham, many of us think of Abraham as somebody who never doubted. Yeah, especially because Romans says that he never, I mean, that Abraham did not stagger. Hmm? That's the word that is used in gems as waver. In some translations or some, some verses, the same word is translated as waver. You know, like a double-minded man cannot receive anything from God because he's double-minded, wavers. So it says here about Abraham, and it says everything nice about Abraham. It says, and he was called the friend of God. It was imputed unto him as righteousness because of one thing, because he believed he had faith in God. He trusted God. But you see, if you actually read the account, if you actually go through the CV or resume of Abraham, Abraham had doubts. Abraham had a time he had to move too late. 
Abraham was called. Abraham never moved until five years passed. And so by the time he went there, something had gone wrong. Abraham was not supposed to go with Lot. But I'm not the one to tell you the bad things he did. But I'm telling you that whenever you are now ready to flow with the Spirit of God, God overlooks your mistakes. And he is more interested in emphasizing what you did right. And that's something about the heart of God that we don't seem to know as people who follow God. People who want to serve God. We think that God is just looking for the slightest opportunity where you make a mistake and then he will hit your head. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. He does not do that. He remembers your sins no more if you have asked for forgiveness. But if you want to pretend, no, nothing went wrong. No, nothing. See, you, you are covering your own iniquities and they will not be forgiven. So you should confess to God. If you have upset somebody, don't go and confess to God and then you ignore the person. You, After you confess to God, apologize to the person. All right? We're talking about practical Christianity. So you see then how that by works a man is justified and, and, and not by faith only. So you can't claim to have faith only and you do not take corresponding action. God wants you in a particular place. God wants you in a particular church. God wants you to work with a particular ministry. Don't go for a substitute. God wants you to work with a particular team, be in on that team. Because today you are serving, but even in the world system, even in educational system, for you to be a good prof, for you to be a professor in the system, you have to go through the time of serving under other prof. You have to have a time that you understood the others. You have, it, have, have to have a time when people supervise the work you are doing. Somebody is there that is qualified to help you through. Doesn't that make sense? Likewise also, was not Rahab the hallowed, that verse 25, was not Rahab the hallowed, justified by works. It mentioned, see, people will always remember, I don't know why, people like remembering you for the bad you did. Even after you've changed. Oh, you mean you mean that uh, pastor that was a drug dealer? <laughs> you mean that pastor that used to steal? Now, God is just, this is just mentioning to say, this man or this woman used to be this, but she was justified by faith. And how do we know she had faith? By the work she did. When she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way. She made sure they were not killed. She received them because she believed the message. Received them, hid them, and ensured that they went through another way and were not destroyed or killed by the wicked people that were after them. So your faith will be proven by the works you do. Say, I really believe in your ministry. What have you been doing to help that ministry to grow? Don't be a fault finder. Some people find fault, like the Zig Ziglar would say. They find fault as if there's any profit in it. They find fault with everything. And watch the things they do. They are full of mistakes. So why do you find fault with others? Remove the log of wood that is in your eyes. So that's why even when we minister, we don't minister as people who are perfect. Others are all bad criminals. No, we are sharing it as the mind of God. And this is what God wants us to do as his own children. This is the mind of God. He wants us to know about him. Praise God. So verse 24 says, we see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So don't keep talking about faith and you do nothing. You do nothing to back up that faith. You do nothing to show that you have that faith. See, God is the one that is waiting on us. We are not the one waiting on him in so many things until a time came when you opened your mouth to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. Do you know you will wait there for God to change you? You will not be changed. 
but he has made that provision. And until you make that confession that comes only as a result of the faith you have in your heart. For with the heart man believes unto right standing with God and with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness, unto salvation. So you believe unto righteousness in your heart. But it's not complete until you confess it with your mouth. Say, but must I confess it? I really believe in my heart. No. It's like saying, I really love her with my heart. And we don't need to do wedding. You have to. We don't need to do the traditional marriage. You have to. You have to. You, that is how you prove the love you have. The love is not just, I love you with my mouth. And I see too many, too many people who are just, they are just doing talk. Faith without works. If you truly love this woman, Go and meet the parents. Don't waste our time. Don't waste our time. I don't know who I'm talking to. So. <laughs> oh, verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead also. The Greek word there is necros. You know, people who practice necromancy. Faith without work is like a dead body. It's like a corpse. Dead body. It does not... I mean, can you imagine a body that is supposed to be alive, but it's just lying there, lying there for more than 10 days. It doesn't even as much as blink. The man doesn't blink. He's just lying there. Guess what will happen after a few days? We'll begin to stink. So some people have that kind of faith. It's not useful. You know how even this, your hand, if you keep it one position for a long time, you will now have difficulty trying to use it because you've not been using it. But because you exercise it, to the extent you exercise your hand or arm, to that extent, you can do some things with it. You can, it can function, it can serve you to that extent because that's to the extent you've been exercising it. So if you are not exercising your faith, it's not going to be effective. It has to be put to work. It has to do something. All right. So let's see. Um, still in James. James has a lot of wisdom for us today. In James, let's go to chapter 5. James chapter 5. Join me to James chapter 5, please. I think we should read NIV. Let's use NIV translation so that uh, we can cut down on the thine and thou and the wherewithal. You know, we're not using that much today. That used to be the English of those days. But now we, we are simple, speaking very simple contemporary English. All right. Here we go. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. From verse 3. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. So facing trouble today is not a strange thing to those who believe. In this world, Jesus said, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. Another word to use it is cheer up. I have overcome the world. Cheer up. See, don't lock the door. Stay indoors and be weeping and be mourning yourself, feeling sorry for yourself. It's a cheer up. And one of the evidences that you are in faith is that you cheer up. You cheer up. If you begin to murmur, mourning, complaining, lamenting, feeling sorry for yourself, feeling that you should eat warm and nobody understands. See, people are going through things. But the sign, the proof that you trust God is that even if you lost a friend, you lost a loved one, you don't weep as a number. You can grieve, but come out of the grief. Don't stay in the grief forever. Rejoicing in hope, Bible says. So it says, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. So you are given the solution. Pray. 
Now, if you don't know how to pray, you need to learn how to pray. That's why we've been talking about how to receive anything from God. And I believe that those things have a lot of stuff for you. You, you can go through them. Pick them one at a time. You have some time in your hand, go through them. It will help you. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. He doesn't say just speak any car, any any house song. You know, some people he said for as long as it's some Bible says you should sing. No, he says that you should sing songs of praise. Don't just go and pick any house song, any song that is telling you, you are burning and burning and burning. What are you are you burning? Who is burning you? That's not <laughs> that's not what the Bible says. It says sing songs of praise. Alright? Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. So if the prayer is not prayed in faith, how do you know the prayer that is in faith? The prayer that is in faith says, when I pray, for you, you'll be well. And you also, you are coming for the prayer because you believe when I'm prayed for, I will be well. So the two people, both the person praying for the sick and the person that is sick, they believe they are going to have the answer to the prayers. So the Jesus said in Luke, I mean in Mark chapter 11, when you pray, believe, you receive, then you will have it. When you pr believe that you receive, then you will have it. Praise God. So, verse um, 15. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So that assurance that God is willing to forgive is what should be emphasized. And the person should see that it should have the basis scripturally. To know that God is, God is not the one who casts the guilt. The devil is called, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. That's one of the names of Satan. That's one of the descriptions of Satan. He's the accuser. He's the one who puts guilt on you. He, con he, 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 he condemns you, but God convicts you. Conviction says you are wrong. Correct yourself or make amends. But the devil says, you are wrong. You are not good. You are condemned. That's what the devil says. And you pay attention more to that. Maybe because of your upbringing. Maybe because of what you think God is. Or you have come to accept. Or you think what people have been saying. Religion has told you. See, God is terrible. It's a terrible God. He, he can just kill you without you are not doing anything. That is not God. When Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he was not referring to himself or the Father, but he was talking about the devil. He said, but I have come so that you may have life and have it in abundance. Verse 16. Therefore, confess your sin to each other and pray each other so that, pray for each other so that you may be healed. There are some sickness that caught, there are some sickness that are caused by sin. And if you sin, sinning shouldn't be a lifestyle. It, you can sin by mistake. You can be overtaken. But if you live there on a consistent basis, then you don't believe in what you are talking about. So the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. What, where did you get the righteousness from? It's not your works. It's the gift that the Father has given unto us by Christ Jesus. So when you receive that gift, you don't go again living the way you used to live. Otherwise, you're not serious. You're not even taking these things serious. You don't take God serious. You don't take yourself serious. You don't take the word of God serious. It says Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly. So then there's got to be the earnest, earnestness in our prayer. And we've got to allow the righteousness of God to speak on our behalf. Not the guilt that the devil is speaking against you. It says he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain 
on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed. So he knew God would hear because it was in line with the will of God. He again, he prayed and it did not rain on the, sorry, again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crop. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will have them from, I mean, will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sin. But you know the mistake that many people make is somebody has fallen into sin, they now go as though they are going to, to serve the devil. And, uh, and go with the mind to condemn, with the, to condemn the person. Instead of winning the person back. You know, another place says, if, you, if somebody is caught in error or is as sin, you that is going to to speak to the person, consider yourself so you don't also go and commit sin. Have we ever thought about that? We should be thinking about that. We are not going to condemn the people. All right. So James chapter one. Let's turn to James chapter one. We are, we are drawing life from James. Somebody likens James in the New Testament to Proverbs in the Old Testament. Because it talks a lot about very practical things. James chapter 1, verse 25. I will try to read some different translations. It says, But whoever looks intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom, is talking about the word of God. All right? Talking about the word of God. This is how faith comes. So if you say you have faith, and it's not in line with the word of God. Maybe you have something else. Not faith. But whoever looks intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues. This is something we need to take note of. Faith is not what you develop because you have problem. Faith is something you have as a lifestyle. Because faith connects you with God. Faith helps you to please God. Faith makes you to win more favor with God. Faith is how God wants us to live. He says, the just shall live by faith. He didn't say the just shall get born again by faith and that's it. No, just as you receive him by faith, you live that way daily. Permit me to, to do some good to myself. I'm beginning to feel a bit parched. All right. I hope you, you are not upset. <laughs> a laborer is worthy of the wages, so I'm, I'm paying myself for that, <laughs> for preaching good. All right. Yeah. Verse 24. And after observing himself goes away. Now, the person who reads the word of God and walks away and forgets everything, he says it's like, it's like the person who, after observing himself in a mirror, walks away and immediately, immediately forgets what he looks like. So the word of God is not something we just um, recite or do as though we are repeating a mantra just so that we get what we want after that. I don't want to have anything to do with God again. In fact, you begin to use the word, I'm not religious. If you are religious, whom were you doing it for? We're you doing it for anybody? God doesn't want you to be religious. God wants you to be his child, his own daughter, his own son. God wants you to be his son because he's building a family. God wants to, to show himself strong on your behalf. So he doesn't just, he's not asking you to be a religious person. God is not interested in religion. Religion has caused more trouble in this world than anything else. So God wants us to be his own children. Live for him. Praise God. So, um, we are supposed to, to look at the word of God and pay attention. Take note at the things that we are supposed to do.
Take note of the things we are supposed to release ourselves from. Take note of the things we are supposed to imbibe, take on board, live by. Verse 25 says, But the one who looks intensely into the perfect law of freedom and continues to do so, not being a forgetful hearer, we have people who hear the word of God now, believing that that will be, bring them blessing. There are people who love hearing the word of God for the fun of it, but they are not committed to doing it. He said, but an effective doer, hallelujah, he will be blessed in what he does. Another translation puts it this way. But whoever looks intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Fantastic. Here is other translation, uh, the English Standard Version. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres. Does that sound like something you just do hit and run? Does that sound like something that is for the uncommitted? It says that God is the reward of them that diligently, diligence is required. Diligent search of God is a sign that you have faith. If because you are challenged or you face some challenges, you have some financial crisis and you just throw away your Bible, you are not serious. Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. But that's what you are showing. That because you are just showing you were not convinced about this thing. One of the worst things you do or you can do against yourself is to abandon a good thing because you didn't have understanding of it. Because wherever you stop, some other person could come and start from there and finish it up. This story about a man who was in prison and then one day he just was able to sum up enough courage. However that happened, I can't remember the full details, but he jumped the hurdles. He jumped the hurdles. In those days of uh, uh, war slaves, he jumped the hurdles just when it was, you know, just short, short distance. I think a few hurdles now before he now can get into freedom. Fear. He yielded his life. His focus was diverted. He now used the energy he would have used to gain his freedom and jumped back to the long distance that he came from. That has happened to people in the faith. There are people who used to believe God so much when we were younger. Today they have abandoned it. Guess what they say? It doesn't work. Ask them why. They will tell you, I've tried it, it doesn't work. It's not true. He says you have to be a diligent searcher. You have to be commit. You have to be perseverant. Perseverance is not studied from school. You cannot. There's no way they, they are teaching it yet. Except maybe I'm the one that is going to teach you now. <laughs> I have the gift of not giving up. By the grace of God. And let me see that God has made this promise. I will stick to it. I don't care who gives up on it. I don't care who gives because I'm not looking at that person. I'm looking at what the word of God says. I'm trusting not in man, but in God. God said it. God said, if I believe it, that I've asked him, I believe it, that I've received it. That's what I want to do. If I didn't know how to do it, I want to learn it. That is how to live a love of faith. It's not tying your faith to any other person. Because the day the person falls or the, the day the person feels, ah, I've held on for too long. See, Bible ask, is when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on earth? That's what God is looking for. Faith means that somebody will hold on until the answer comes. Faith means that when others give up, not me. That's why we don't have too many people who live by faith. But they just, in this New Testament, they just shall live by faith. So we got to be people who know how to hold on. Committed people. Faithful people. People that God can depend on. When everybody else says, no, don't talk about God so that you don't sound religious, you are a person of faith. You are not just talking about it. You are living by it. Praise God. You, you can just remind yourself of what the word of God says. And people will see you, see how you live your life, and they want to live like you. So it says in this translation, 
English Standard Version, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. That's what we're talking about. God blesses those who hold on to his word, who believe in what he's saying, who hold on to what he has said. Said the word of God cannot come and not accomplish. That's not the word of God. The word of God comes to do something. If the heart is stony, can break that heart into, you know, so that it will now can be molded. God can do that. But he respects your own will. God respects your will. I want us to go back with this. If we are doers of the word of God, we have millions of people who are hearers of the word of God. Going to church has become a culture in the family. It has become a family culture, a family tradition. So they grow up and become churchgoers. God did not call us to be churchgoers. I want people to come to church, but not for the purpose of coming to church as a culture, but coming to church so you can hear the word of God, fellowship with others, be challenged by the faith and the testimonies of others. So you go back and be a doer of the word, not just hearers that forget. We are having so many. If Can you imagine if all of us who are believers in God, if we are doers of the word, what kind of a world this will be? The world will want to have the families the kind we have, want to have the blessings of God. He says you shall be blessed in everything you do. And that's the challenge I want us to take up. Are we ready to persevere? Hold on to what the word of God has said. See, the, the thing about tithing that people are struggling with is that they think it's what they have to reason out. Tithe belongs to God. And some people come with a very smart one. You know what they do? They say, everything I have belongs to God. Then you have nothing to give to him because he has everything. But you know that everything you have is not God that owns it because you are the one who apportioned them to the things that you consider important. If you want to walk with God and he says tithe belongs to God, when you have a place where you feed from, you have a place that you feed your soul, receive spiritual guidance and direction, be glad to do it. Don't keep God's money. And let's trust him and see. You shall be blessed in all your deeds. Watch out for when I will teach on, on, on sowing and reaping. Bible says, let me give you a quick hint. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. It says, be not weary in well-doing for, for in due season. Right, So the reason why you have to persevere in faith is that God does not just do things at random. He has faithful children and for every faithful child, there is a due season. The due season for you in one area is not the due season for me. We all have a due season, but God wants to see you follow him because of faith, not because you want him to supply your food. When they, the people were running and crossing the water and following him, he said, I know why you come. I know it's because you ate. I know you want me to give you more food. <laughs> and God is not holding back. But he wants us to serve him because we love him. You know how we look at the texts from somebody that loves us or somebody whom you love. And the person sends you some love notes. And you read and you'll be smiling alone. I don't you wonder how some... You get amazed at some people walking on the street and with their earphones or headphones, you know, and they are walking and having doing some display of gestures on the road and laughing alone. <laughs> because they are hearing from a lover. So it happens also, you receive a text from your loved one. <laughs> yeah, just look at that can you imagine that 
We do that because you are reading from somebody you you love, somebody who loves you. So if you see the word of God as a love letter written by the God who cares for you more than you care for yourself, you will read it with delight. You will read it and feel privileged because they know everyone who has the access to read this word. Read it with the mind. Have an intention. I'm reading this Bible not so that I have my head filled with knowledge so I, I can become proud. No, it's I'm reading it because I want to experience it. I'm meditating on this word. It says you shall be blessed in all your deeds if you are doer. Let's make up our minds to be doers of God's word. It will pay great dividend, not just to you, but to your children. Your children's children will come and be blessed by that blessing that God is putting on you. God pass it on so that your grandchildren will be like Timothy, whom Paul observed and said, I have observed that genuine faith that was in your grandmother and was also in your mother has been handed, passed on to you. I have seen that you have that genuine faith. You are not having that you don't have the funny faith that some people have. You don't have that fake faith that others have. You have genuine faith. Let's do that. Let's invest into our heart, into ourselves, so that we leave the blessing, a blessed name for our children. More than just giving them things. A blessed name. The memory of the just is blessed. A man who is a doer, a woman who is a doer of the word, shall be blessed in all his deeds. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your wonderful people. Thank you for everyone who has made up time, created time to listen to this. Some have had a busy day, but they still create time. Some, because they, they, they appreciate your hand upon me, they make out time to listen and watch. I pray that you bless them. Let this word lift them up. Let not one be lost of everyone that has listened to this or will listen to this. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your ever-abiding presence. I pray, Lord, that your fatherhood will be real to your children. Lord, in this season that you're talking about fruitfulness and increase, you spoke to my heart that you give increase. Peter planted Apollos water. But it is you that gives increase. Lord, give increase in their lives, in their work, in their business, in their family. Let there be increase. Let there be noticeable increase. I bless every listener and ask, Lord, that you will help them. Cause them to succeed. At the end of their life, let it be said like it was said of Abraham, that they are blessed in all their deeds, that they are blessed all round. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, if you feel led to be part of what we are doing, by the grace of God, the next five years, our goal is to reach one million people for God. It's not difficult. In fact, one of the ways is put this video on your wall so your friends can watch it. Number two, financial commitment. You can as little as five pounds, as little as 10 pounds every month. All you do is go to the website. So you want to know what to do, please inbox us and uh, we are happy, happy to help. But the website is www.amazinggracefamily.org. Thank you ever so much for creating time to be with me even at such a short notice really appreciate you and i pray that the god of heaven who is blessing our lives blessing our work will bless you thank you and bye for now